Recording is on. Welcome to the Global International Pedagogical Forum, IPF 2020, which I'm representing now. My name is Lilith, and today my guest is Dr. Noreen Sheehy, lecturer in medical microbiology at Center of Experimental Pathogen Host Research of University College Dublin. Honorable Professor, we do appreciate that you took your time to participate to the forum and answer our questions. So I, I, I would like to thank the chairman and participants of the International Pedagogical Forum, IPF um, 2020, for the invitation to participate in, in this. Thank you so much. Uh, though the coronavirus infection has hit the countries all over the world, there are still many rumors about it. So the very first question is, if COVID-19 really exists? Yes, that's a, that's a big question. And if it doesn't exist, I just wonder why the whole world has shut down as a result of it. Um, yes, uh, it, it definitely uh, exists. Uh, it is the cost of agent of the severe respiratory uh, disease that we see in infected individuals. And I suppose um, really the evidence for that is based on the fact that we can detect the virus in nasal uh, pharyngeal samples. Um, that are obtained from patients with symptoms. Um, so that shows that the virus is present in the respiratory tract and that it is uh, linked to the symptoms that are, are presenting. Now, in addition to that, just because a virus is present doesn't always mean that it is actually the cause of agent, but you can also grow the virus from those samples. So um, it that really indicates that it, it is really the, the causative agent for the symptoms you are seeing. And the other kind of evidence is that it is not present in patients or is not detected in patients that recover uh, from the disease. So again, um, that's a strong indicator that the, um, the virus is causing the, the symptoms that are, are uh, presenting in patients. Um, so really, I it, it definitely exists, and it's um, it's really a formidable uh, pathogen uh, in the sense that it is highly infectious and can spread quite easily between individuals if it's not controlled. So, in answer to your question, yes, I think it definitely exists. <laughs> And uh, COVID-19 is just an ordinary flu or is something more serious? Because uh, many scientists talk about the synthetic nature of the virus that it was developed in the laboratories. What do you think about that? Um, I suppose the seriousness of this infection is the fact that it is new. There is no pre-existing immunity. Um, mm -hmm. So that results then in more severe symptoms and more severe uh, disease. Um, now, the, our normal influenza that, you know, the normal flu, seasonal flu and, and so on, there is a vaccine, there is treatment available for that. So it can be controlled in that fashion. But given the, the kind of the novel nature of this uh, particular virus makes it, extremely um, kind of serious um, and difficult to control. Um, as I mentioned already, it is also highly infectious. Um, so it can be spread very easily and there's no, well, at the moment, there's no real definite way of uh, controlling it. But of course, there are a lot of measures being taken to develop new treatments and in the development of vaccines. So um, in time, of course, this will be controllable. Um, but at the moment, it, 
it's not really controllable by our kind of traditional ways of dealing with infections. So you said that the virus is new and, and um, but the pandemic is widely spread, spreading. So how to deal with this and how to deal with the pandemic? I suppose the, the, the best way of dealing with a respiratory infection, any respiratory infection, and certainly this one is containment. Um, so stop the spread is really the only way to, to deal with it. Um, so self-isolation, shutting everything down, which most countries uh, did, but are now coming back out of it, um, is really the best way to, to do that. So you really want to reduce the R number, the reproductive number for the virus down as low as possible. So um, maybe, you know, um, and, and the reproductive, the, the R number is the number of people that will become infected from one infected individual. So if you can reduce that to less than one, then you have a, a really good chance of uh, reducing the spread. And the only way you can really do that is to uh, contain uh, the infection to, to um, have isolation of infected individuals. Um, and of course, the use of appropriate uh, protective um, gear, uh, protective uh, clothing, and so on for healthcare workers is is crucial in this. Mm -hmm. um, so containment really is is the best way to 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 stop it, which I think most countries have really done. And what is the current situation in the world now? What is the scale of pandemic? now at this moment? So at the moment, um, there is over 5 million uh, cases, uh, you know, uh, lab laboratory kind of confirmed cases, and there's a, a case fatality rate of about 6% globally. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, I think it's it's formidable in that sense. The the case fatality rate, of course, uh, varies between countries. Um, some countries seem to experience a, a, quite a, a higher case fatality rate than others uh, for different reasons. But nevertheless, um, this is is kind of more or less what happened with this. But overall, on average, it's about six six uh, percent case fatality rate globally. And uh, what about uh, such a high indicator of infected doctors and nurses? How can it be explained? I suppose it can be maybe explained for a, 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 a few reasons. They are exposed, they have a higher exposure rate than, than uh, other people in, in the community and, and so on. Um, so the likelihood is that um, there will be a higher um, infection rate in, in these individuals. There was also a, a lack, I suppose, of uh, PPE um, or availability to PPE given the, the scale of the pandemic. Um, so Yes, it's it's a, a very difficult situation for frontline healthcare workers in in that respect, and in particular, we'll say for nursing homes, um, seem to have been hit quite uh, severely by this, and that could be related, of course, to maybe a lack of of planning for the nursing home, and maybe a lack of PPE in those uh, places. Also, the the nature of nursing homes. In in the in the sense that you you are dealing with an older age group, um, and so on, which seem to be hit more severely by the um, infection. So uh, there are you know a number of reasons I guess that healthcare workers seem to have been uh, affected more so than the general community. But it's the nature of what they do. Um, I think is, is a, a key reason for that. 
Um, what about China, where everything has started? So China turned out to be faster and more efficient in combat with uh, coronavirus and Wuhan is open now, but many, many countries all over the world are in very difficult situation. So how can it be explained? Maybe the reason is that, that uh, China uses disease uh, monitoring system based on SARS. And if yes, are there any such monitoring systems in other countries? Um, I am not that familiar with the, the monitoring systems. I know that contact uh, tracing, of course, is, is key to controlling the infection. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I think mobile phone apps have been developed to, um, again, to try to trace contacts of infected individuals, which is, is mm -hmm. probably a key thing uh, to do. But I suppose the situation in, in China, it kind of, they are more familiar with dealing with similar outbreaks mm -hmm. because of SARS. Um, and it, it struck me back earlier on, I think in January, China were rapidly building a, a hospital, uh, which I, I thought was, was really, um, extraordinary that they could, um, that they could do this in such a short period of, of time. But of course, their, their objective in all of that was containment. Um, and they were ready, I suppose, to deal with this more so than other countries. Now, of course, um, mm -hmm. we learned a lot from China in, in how they dealt with it as, as, as well. But um, they also had, they were, ahead of the game, I suppose, in the sense that they may have had more availability of PPE and, and so on because the demand hadn't yet kicked in. But um, mm -hmm. so I, you know, I think uh, a lot can be learned from how they dealt with it. And of course, as I said, they have, um, they're more experienced at dealing with these types of um pandemics than the rest of the world, really. On January 7, 2020, uh, virologists from Wuhan University warned of a coronavirus infection and released into the world pathogen genome so that everyone around the world could as quickly as possible develop kits for researching this issue. So uh, has anyone dealt with it? Oh, yes, I think um, the response has been tremendous in, in a very short turnaround time. I think it was key for um, a key step that China did release the, um, the, the sequence of the, uh, the virus very, very early on so that, um, you know, diagnostic tests and so on could be uh, produced. Um, and diagnosis of infection is, is key to controlling and containment of the um, infection. So I think, you know, globally, it, ha it all the countries have tried to deal with this um, and have responded to control the level of infection in, in their various countries. Um, so yes, I, I do think, in as much as possible, every country has dealt with this um, to limit the damage that um, that it will it caused, um, and are still dealing with it. And of course, we'll be dealing with it probably for a long time. Um, but yes, I do think it it has been dealt with. You said that the virus is the new one. So five months after, what can we say about COVID-19? What do, do we know about it? Uh, we know the incubation period. We know the risk groups. We know that asymptomatic carriers can infect other people. What else can be added to this list? I suppose really it, it is an absolutely new, new virus. So. Um, 
information will be gained, a lot more information will be gained as we go along. Um, the response has been rapid and research uh, into the virus has been very rapid, um, extraordinarily rapid when you look at you know research on, on um, other viruses. Uh, we do know that it is highly infectious, as most respiratory viruses are. Um, and I suppose, really, it has highlighted the problem with pandemics. We have not experienced a pandemic uh, in a very long time, and I think a lot will be learned from this one. If and you know, uh, so that you know, measures can be put in place if another one was to um, was to occur. There's a lot of research going on into trying to produce a vaccine for the the uh, virus, and and progress has been made there. Also, in the development of treatments. So, um, I think in a, in a short period of time. Um, an awful lot of information has been gained about the virus, and now, as as you know, uh, countries recover and come out of the immediate uh, threat, uh, more kind of detailed information will be uh, gained about the virus and the host response to uh, the virus, in in particular, uh, the immune response against uh, the virus. Um, you know, a lot of information will be gained from uh, that type of of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about the treatment? Uh, so far, no effective treatment uh, has been developed. We already know uh, that this is unusual flu, but we do not have any fundamental new treatment for that. Not yet, but I, I, I do think it will be forthcoming there are, you know really big funding schemes gone into the development of treatments maybe to target a step in the viral life cycle that uh, will limit the spread in in the body and as a result of that limit the damage that is being done to um to the lungs um so that usually kind of follows the course is to try to target the, uh, the the viral life cycle limit the replication of, of the um, of the virus I think um, there is quite a bit known from SARS and it is quite similar to SARS at a, at a genetic level um, so you know it 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 might be quite easy or not easy, but um, it might be quite uh, possible to uh, produce uh, novel therapeutics that will limit the replication of the virus. Okay. Uh, we know that specialists all over the world are working on vaccine. And what do you think when we can expect its appearance? Um, vaccine studies are, are complicated. They they take time, but I think the uh, the urgency in this is is uh, driving the development, the rapid development of uh, a vaccine. Because of course, vaccines are the holy grail of uh, preventing infection and protection of the uh, communities. So. Nevertheless, though, vaccines have to be tested. Um, clinical trials have to be carried out um, to ensure that those vaccines are actually safe. Um, so maybe in another six months, a vaccine, a safe, effective vaccine might be available uh, for this, which would be uh, really key, as I said, to uh, controlling the um, infection. Uh, you mentioned that as um, with the time passed, we will know more and more about the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And what about so far? Do we know what, uh, do we know something about immunity system? So does immunity develop how long it can protect us? Is it true that people who had already get sick 
they will never get sick again. Is it? What do we know about that? I think there's a lot of unknowns in that. Um, like there has been some studies carried out on on individuals that have recovered, and they have looked at the the neutralizing antibody levels in those individuals to see if there was a link between the level of neutralizing antibodies in those individuals and the fact that they recovered. Mm -hmm. um, now, some individuals that recover have high levels of neutralizing antibodies, some do not. Um, so there doesn't, at the moment, seem to be a very clear pattern as to the link between the development of neutralizing antibodies and clearing the infection. Um, however, maybe bigger studies will be uh, required because I think, you know, a lot of emphasis up to now has been placed on um, detecting the virus and, and um, all of that. And now the, the focus is, is probably shifting on obtaining um, blood samples, we'll say, from large cohorts of patients to see what the kind of the protective immunity is um now it's it's not clear if you actually had the infection whether you're going to be become infected um again at this um at this point and this type of stuff is also very important uh, when testing out the vaccines um to see what level of immunity is um is uh, generated in vaccinated uh, individuals so i guess right now the answer is it's not really clear um what the situation will be but um hopefully immunity will be um kind of will last for a while um it could be maybe that people need to be vaccinated every year or you know it's it's just not clear at this point And what about summer temperatures? Because there are also a lot, a lot of controversial opinions that summer temperatures will stop the flow of the virus because this is the virus. What do you think about it? I I, I don't really think it's the, the summer temperatures. I think it's, it's more the environment, you know. Um, people are outside more. People are not in, in you know, the they tend to get out um, more. Um, the air is drier, really, during the, the summer. There's not as much moisture. There's not as much uh, maybe opportunity for the virus to um, survive while it's being transmitted. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's it's actually the summer or whether it's just our, our behavior during uh, the oh, summer is more the issue than the actual temperatures themselves. Um, so hopefully it, 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 uh, will, it will control it um, mm -hmm. and shut it down. Okay. And uh, what about the measures which should be taken not to suffer from the infection? Well, of of uh, of course, you mean the 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 self isolation, yeah, um, the the two meter uh, distancing that we're all observing at the at the moment. Um, so there are a number of measures, of course, washing your hands, um, uh. You know, etiquette about coughing and uh, sneezing, all of that, um, and and basically just keeping your distance because the virus is spread by respiratory droplets. Um, so the more we can limit that uh, that transmission route, as as it were, uh, the more likely it is that um, you will limit the spread of the virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, what about quarantine? What about lockdowns? Because many states impose lockdowns, in, and uh, is this a necessary measure, or is this the only effective one? I think it has been very effective. 
I think it, it was extremely necessary to do this, even though the economic cost, of course, is, is huge and, and the, the social cost is, is very high. But it is the, again, it's getting back to the whole containment thing. You are limiting the number of people you're coming in contact with. You're limiting the opportunity for the virus to spread. Um, so really, I think, certainly even from our own situation here in, in um, Ireland, the lockdown was very effective. Um, the, and in other countries uh, across Europe, um, it, it seemed to get the, uh, the, the overall infection under control. Uh, because really, if you if you limit it, then mm -hmm. you will possibly eliminate it, or you know, or at least get it to a low enough level that your healthcare system is able to to cope with it. Um, so yes, I think the lockdowns were were extremely important in the control of um, of this, and countries that lock down earlier rather than mm -hmm. later seem to to fare better than um you know clearly indicating that the lockdown was effective mm -hmm. so at uh, this moment some i i would say most of europe has passed the peak and uh, lockdowns are being relaxed yes. but is there a risk of second wave and if yes, is it correct to remove the restrictions? Yes, I think there is. That there could possibly be a risk of a second wave because uh, you know a lot of people are not immune to this. They, they, they haven't been exposed to this. So if it if it, it comes up again, if it if it spreads rapidly again, then of course the potential is there. But I think most governments have said that if there is. A, an increase again in cases that the lockdown will be re-implemented. Um, mm -hmm. Now that will be extremely difficult from a, uh, an economic uh, point of view. Um, but in the absence of effective treatments or in the absence of a vaccine, I think the, the options are limited. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be extremely unfortunate on so many different levels if if this does uh, reoccur um, at this point, as I said, because there's just no vaccine available um, for it and no treatments. So um, it's it's going to be difficult. Hopefully not. Like a lot of countries have already reopened and they haven't really um, kind of seen that kind of a spike again. But time will tell, really, you know, it, it, the time span maybe isn't long enough yet, um, but hopefully it won't. Yeah, let's hope. And what is current situation uh, in your country now? Well, at the moment, um, I got these figures here. At the moment, um, we have a case fatality rate of about 6%. Um, we have about 250,000 confirmed uh, cases of the uh, infection. So the lockdown measures, we're in phase one of coming out of the lockdown measures. Um, so we're still observing social distancing, uh, non-essential travel, all of that is um, kind of not recommended. Um, we have a five kilometer um, um, space that we can go out in, um, but we will be moving on there, I think in other four phases. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of pressure on governments to speed this up because you know, people uh, people want to move and and they they want to go back to work as well, which is is um, another another big thing. But um, I think that the measured um, coming out of the lockdown is is really essential to um, ease people back out of this um, 
the state that we have found ourselves in for the last uh, two months. Um, but yes, it's it's um, certainly our um, infection rate here. Our, our numbers of new infections are really down. They're below 100 and they're teetering around 50 new infections per day. Um, so, you know, it is it is very positive. I think um, what has happened and, and the control measures that were introduced, the harsh control measures that felt very harsh at the time, really seem to have paid off. Um, and it, it's just easing back out of that now into uh, normal, some form of normality in our daily lives. Um, be uh, really, really great. Um, dear Professor, thank you, thank you very much for the interesting interview and your valuable opinion. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you very much.